working three jobs, studying for 18 hours a day, have 12 kids to feed on a salary of $100 per month, stress sucks, doesn't it? However, it turns out that stress actually makes a lot of sense to cavemen. First things first, the term stress has a few problems with it. You can't just say, hey, stress, you have to add some sort of identifier next to it. The most usual identifiers that are used for stress are chronic stress and acute stress. And this is going to be the point of discussion in the video. However, it's still kind of problematic to say that it is kind of better to define stress in terms of what is causing such stress instead of just saying, hey, stress, you'll know why later on. Now, why is stress a function that is useful to cavemen, but it's not exactly useful in today's world? Why, why is this the case? Well, think about it in the following way. Have you ever had pain before? Have you ever coughed? Have you ever vomited? Have you ever had a fever? You would think that those things are bad and they are the result of a disease. But in fact, it is the opposite. Your body intentionally does that in order to protect you from threats. Stress is the same deal except there is one key difference. Stress is a set of defense and offense mechanisms that allow you to defend yourself from certain threats, but at the same time, it also allows you to capture opportunities that otherwise would be difficult to get without the function of stress. The thing is, stress as a biological function proved to be so valuable that almost every vertebrate species living today has some sort of a stress response. Now, to convey to you why stress has actually been a very valuable function for the survival of cavemen back in the day, let's take one of those cavemen. Now, our caveman here, let's say he is out there and he's doing caveman -y stuff, gathering some caveman -y things, when suddenly a tiger shows up. Big, big problem. So what exactly happens here? In this case, something kicks in. And you've probably heard of this term before, which is called the fight or flight response. In other words, acute stress. Okay, fight or flight, acute stress. Same deal to a certain extent. So, um, what what happens now? What happens? Okay, stress kicked in. What happens to to our caveman here? How does stress defend our caveman? Well, for that situation, certain bodily functions become more important than others. So, what happens is that in general, in general our caveman's body starts to pull resources away from less important bodily functions to more important bodily functions for that situation, being chased by a tiger. Now, that was an example of the stress response being used defensively, but let's take another example where the stress response is being used offensively. Let's imagine that we have this cheetah, and this cheetah is about to try and capture a gazelle, and it goes for it. It goes for it. What happens? The stress response activates. The cheetah's ginormous heart starts pumping ginormous amount of blood throughout its body. Its ginormous lungs start to take in big and rapid deep breaths, which increase from 60 breaths per minute to 150 breaths per minute. And its body, which is built with the stress response in mind, goes to a speed of about 64 kilometers per hour in a matter of three strides. Do you see what is going on here? What is going on is that the cheetah's body is pulling resources away from less important bodily functions to more important bodily functions in order to capture the opportunity of eating a gazelle. But at the same time, the gazelle now is under the threat of being eaten by, well, a cheetah. So it activates its own stress response 
pulling resources away from less important bodily functions to more important bodily functions in order to avoid the threat of being eaten by a cheetah. In both cases, it is stress. However, for the cheetah, it wants to capture an opportunity. It wants to eat. But for the gazelle, it wants to avoid a threat, which is in this case being eaten by a cheetah. Now let's imagine that the cheetah has not been able to capture the gazelle. The gazelle has been able to successfully evade the cheetah. If the cheetah continues chase for a prolonged period of time, this will put the cheetah at a disadvantage and the gazelle at an advantage. Why? Because the stress response in a cheetah's body, the way resources are pulled away from less important bodily functions to more important bodily functions in order to capture the opportunity of eating a gazelle is much more extreme than that of, well, a gazelle's. It is so extreme that if the cheetah continues chasing its prey for more than 30 seconds, then it could risk heat exhaustion and maybe even death. Interestingly enough, it turns out the fact that cheetahs' bodies overheat while chasing their prey is not actually true. The problem with that, however, is that it is known that cheetahs give up chase very fast. A cheetah's chase will rarely last over a minute. And once a cheetah is done from a chase, it has to rest for something like 30 minutes. So there is still something within this cheetah's body that is saying, hey, you're risking damaging something. This stress response that you have is actually very extreme. Please don't do it for too long. Now the thing that is going to be damaged, well, it is not really known yet. Another interesting thing, it turns out, according to the researchers that have busted the myth that cheetahs' bodies overheat while chasing their prey, according to them, it looks like a cheetah's body overheats after capturing prey, not while capturing prey, and it continues for a, you could say, relatively long period of time. And a possible reason for this? Well, a cheetah's body is built for speed, not strength. Another threat becomes, well, a threat. In this case, lions and hyenas, as an example. So, a cheetah becomes in a state of alertness because if a cheetah, if a lion actually, or a hyena shows up and want to eat whatever the cheetah has caught, the cheetah better run the hell away. Now back to our caveman here, who by the way is still being chased by a tiger. What exactly is happening in his body? Well, in his body, adrenaline, nor adrenaline cortisol are released from the adrenal gland. And you end up with an increased heart rate, increased breathing rate, muscle, muscle tension goes up, um, he starts to sweat more in order to cool himself off, and he ends up pretty much feeling like an overall badass. This increases the chances of this caveman from escaping from the tiger. However, it's not necessarily the case because the tiger himself also has his own offensive stress response in order to catch that cave man, which is using it, using it uh, defensively. So it depends who is risking more here in order to get what they want. One is seeking survival, one is seeking food. Okay, okay. Now, the issue with that is that this sort of stress response comes at the cost of other things. And if this sort of, of uh, pooling of resources continues for a while, this risks damaging the caveman's body. So, that is an issue. You see, the thing is, your body is the same body as a caveman's body, and it reacts to threats, to dangers, the same way as a caveman's body would. There is a big problem with that, and the problem is that a caveman's body has a very good reason to activate the stress response because the threats, the dangers that a caveman would face are actual real threats that jeopardize survival, such as being chased by a freaking tiger. But in your case, you live in an environment where there are fake 
threats, but are still perceived to be real threats by your body that still activates the stress response. Your body doesn't know that you are not an actual real threat. Your boss screaming at you, your kids demanding food, um, I don't know, panicking over an exam and having to study for it when it is less than four hours away are all things that are considered to be dangerous and threatening by your body and that activates the stress response and that is a very big problem. Why? Because over time, if you get continuously exposed to dangerous, threatening situations, you could go into chronic stress mode. You could call it acute stress, but it is always turned on. Now, as I've said, there are costs associated with the stress response because it carries risks with it. So, if the cost of stress accumulates over time, it manifests itself into stress symptoms. And that is what is causing a big problem in the world today, the symptoms of chronic stress. Now, I'm not going to get into too much detail about those symptoms. If you would like to know more about them, I've put a link in the description by the American Institute of Stress for you to Okay, look over them. So with all that that I have said, you can see how the problems that we have because of stress are the result of an outdated biological function that has not been updated to match 21st century standards, at least in developed countries. And for that, you can thank nature herself. That has been my take on why stress is stressful. And with that, thank you very much.